Hey guys, welcome back to Ski-Doo Redo. It is a gross rainy day here, the second day of November, which kind of sucks because once it gets cold, all I want is the snow, not the freaking rain. But that's okay, we're not quite done the sled yet. In this episode, we're gonna get this thing done. So let's go inside and see what's going on. Okay, here we are back in the shop and there have been a few developments since the last episode of Ski Do Redo. So why don't you let the people at home know, Matt, what we've been doing and what you've been doing and what we're gonna do today. All right, um, well, as you'll see, uh, I did a little bit of work on my own that I shot on the GoPro and um, we'll show you what I did. I took out the front radius rods. How you doing today, guys? Um, we're on an off day here for shooting. So I just decided that I was going to get in here and pull out these front radius rods on the sled. It, it's, it's fairly evident to me, and I'll show you here, that the previous owner had a run in with a tree. You can clearly see where these two have been bent back, and we're having some minor frame contact right in here and in here as the springs travel against the rods. So, and you can also see a little bit of bending there in the frame. So, and I'm, I'm assuming that's when this happened. So I removed those, I took them to the vise and I straightened them out because I looked at buying new ones and I said, this thing is not a performance this unit. This is a budget build. It's a budget build. <laughs> I bent them back, they're 98%-ish and I painted them, let's put them back in and we're gonna move on with our lives. Yeah, they look good. So now that those are out, the next step today is we've got a nice fancy new trailing arm which is somewhere around here, we'll show yeah. you in a minute. Uh, so we're gonna get this old one out of here, yeah, replace sure. replace that rod, and then we can reinstall the radius rods that I repaired, change sides. over a couple bits of hardware here, and then we've got a couple of new skis. Yeah, grab the ski show them. We got some fresh new skis for this well, baby. New new to us. Yeah, new, new to us. I bought them off uh, I bought them off a kid out in the country, so they've been beat up a little bit, but hey, for what I paid for them versus the cost of new skis, hell, they're gonna go on. They're gonna be great. Yeah, better than what we got. Yeah. So we're gonna put the new skis in, finish all the front end stuff, then we can button the motor back up, put all the covers back on, breather box back in. I got a new drive belt. We're gonna reinstall that. We're gonna finish the key wiring today, and that's it, we're in business. Matt's out here wrecking tools again. <laughs> I don't know my own strength, apparently. <laughs> Completely seized. Yeah, how about the other end? Do we take the ski off first? Yeah, I was just thinking that. I've never, to be honest with you, I've never really taken apart something like this. So, this is a learning experience as we go along here. Yeah, we'll figure it out. I've never really changed anything suspension-wise much really on my sleds. But that's because I ride like a, uh, like a grandma. I'm <laughs> never in a hurry. I got a bent trailing arm right now, actually. Yeah. So I gotta fix that. Yeah, you, you do not. But that's because I was not riding like a grandma. You do not ride <laughs> no. no, I was pretty mean to that sled. Alright, so we just got a gnarly, oh I see, there's just a little C-clip, okay so I'm going to need a pair of C-clip pliers and then that center should drop out. I was trying to come up under like that, that yeah, wouldn't no. work. I mean if you if you can get it, great, that'll actually work fine, but, there I gotta lift it. Yeah, because you'll lift it. Okay, you keep going, you keep lifting, yep, 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 once it's out of the track we're a mint. Yeah, there we're you go. Mint. You can hold it? Yeah, I got it. Okay. Nice. Wow, that went a lot smoother than I thought it was going to. Yeah, I mean, nicely, uh, nicely greased. Yeah, whoever was keeping up the grease on it. So now we got to keep going though, because on this side we got to get this whole trailing arm off. Well, the last piece is, is the just bolt. the shock, huh? The shock. I'm just gonna put this tire tire on over here for now. Yeah, just this one bolt. That's not yeah. hard at all. No, it's just not hard at all. I hopefully not too seized. Nice. Right. This is what I use to take everything else out. Yeah. Yep, that's it. To hold it on the other end, Noah. She just needs a little. No, it's not spinning yet. She just needs a little more oomph. Oh, it wasn't spinning at all? No, she just needs a little more oomph to get going. And maybe some WD. There you go. We called them the big guns. Penetrating fluid. Oh, hello, right on the light. Caused another fire. Well, at, least, at least we're consistent with the audience, then. <laughs> Try to get on the back side too. All right. So 
So I'm going to make it a little more slippery for us. That can allow me to fight back against the torque here. Yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> he looks like you're getting something. Something's moving, whether it's slipping or spinning. <coughs> The bolt was spinning? Yeah, the whole thing was spinning. Okay, well, at least it's moving now. That's... I mean, yeah, but... One more time. You're gonna need to brace it on this side. Hold on, hold on, hold on. That's a bad idea. I'm gonna cut myself open. <laughs> wow. Um... Okay. Man. Look at it so good. And one bolt brings you, grinds you to the hole. Okay, I'm gonna get a 17 mil wrench. Yeah, I don't And I'm gonna get the propane torch. And we're yeah. gonna heat her up a bit. Okay. When in doubt, burn it. Haven't we used enough fire out here already? Never enough fire. Yeah, this bolt is really being tough for no. us, so we're not burning it off. No, we're just going to heat it up. We've got a gas shock, so we're going to attempt not to get that too hot. Attempt. So actually, maybe we're going to go in slightly. Yeah, crank her down. There you go. Can you see it okay? It's just the peeling paint down there. Okay. That's burning. You can see it peeling off. But the bottom of the shock is getting a little heat on it, so be careful. Let me know. I mean, it's moving, but is the whole thing slipping? Oh, oh, bro. oh even better. Even better. She's out. <laughs> <laughs> that was beautiful. Did the nut snap or did the bolt no, the, snap? The bolt snapped at the neck. Here was hot, 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 hot. Yeah, yeah, I'm grabbing the wrench. Okay, I thought you were grabbing the No, no, no. The, nut. the nut's over there underneath the ski. Yeah, where is it? Under the ski? Under the back of the ski there. Alright, there she is. There. Yeah, the whole bolt. So, thank you for Well, well that's, that's one way to get it out. Yeah, that actually <laughs> works pretty right. easy. We'll grab a spare from the garage and we'll just, move on. Yeah, perfect. Right, worst case scenario, we run down a crappy tire and good to go. That's the mask right there. What up, mask? Alright, see if you can't knock her through. It's not moving. Not even a little, eh? It's not moving at all. Hmm. Barely anything. Not much more than you had from before. Yeah. That's a good idea. Just be careful on the actual shock body. Oh yeah, okay, 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 you're getting real movement now. Maybe not try tapping it out again? Sure. And here, maybe I can... Oh, I can't. Okay, okay just hold it. Yeah. yeah, it's the bolt is jammed in the bushing. Yeah, it's seized in the bushing. Sorry, right, hold on, change of tack here. Yeah. I was wondering if this would come out easy. So then we could able to kind of bend this and open it up. Yeah. So yeah, well then it would kind of flip down. That also seems to want to be a not not nice to us right now. Yeah, that one down there seems kind of yeah. seized on too. Oh, it's yeah, going. Yeah. There you go. Hold on, hold on, slow, 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 okay. Oh yeah. Punch me in the face. Oh, and one of my oh, oh, there we go. That was it. <laughs> that was right there. Okay, sorry. Okay. I was just worried it was gonna come flying off. Well, that's good. So now let's okay, see if this will twist. Yeah, now open it up. Maybe you can get a better angle on prying it. Just yeah, just I'll be just, as careful as you can with the shock maybe body. Maybe just snap it off, and then we can do whatever. Yeah, we'll have to see if what we can get out of the shock. And... Yeah. See how seized it is in there. So the whole bushing is turning, or was turning inside. Yeah. Inside of that guy. Okay. okay. I'm gonna get a drill, and I'm gonna drill the bolt out. Yeah, you think we need to? Because then I can try and save the bushing a bit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because I mean, if I don't have to order another bushing, I can just put a new bolt in, and that's obviously preferable. Yeah. 
So I'm gonna go grab my my DeWalt and a set of bits. Okay. You can keep screwing with it, I'll be right back. Here's more light. It's so close to popping out. Come on. Ah, come on. <sighs> I kind of knew that was going to happen. I just really wanted to get this out. That's two tools today. Didn't work out for me. Ah! And I thought it was gonna happen. I was trying the crowbar, I couldn't do it. I was so close. Look how much I've got this out. This bushing is like over halfway out. Oh, okay. It's so close to getting there. And then this stupid fucking thing. Workforce. I hope Workforce isn't good quality. No. <laughs> oh, I bought that whole set of screwdrivers for like $11. Okay, good. Home Depot. Yeah, get that. And if I hold it, we're so close here. And try to just get between the yeah, shock yeah, here yeah, and the yeah. edge. Exactly. And if I hold onto it, I bet we can get her. Yeah, the little of rye bar would have been it's not clutch, little, but, but it's not little or it's just got a better tip on it. Yeah, a sharper edge, right? Yeah. yeah, that could work. No, 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 you're on the bolts, yeah. Come on, man. Like, it seems to be loose, but it's just hitting this one point where it's just not loose. Oh yeah, there you go, yeah, maybe just keep trying to bend her up and down and... Come on, come on, there it is! Alrighty then. Alright, so, first things first, it's the end of my sway bar link. I'm gonna just clip that guy back in, so that's just my sway bar end. Yeah, and it slots in there. Yeah. Be able to do it? So, That'll hold her together. So, yeah, she shouldn't go nowhere. Okay, and now this end's good to be slipped on there. Should we grease that post at all? Uh, yeah, sure. We're gonna grab it right on the seat there. I'll do it, my hands are already, my hands are already greasy. Put a little bit on there, just slip it in. Just get her on there nice and good. Cause I, the inside of this was already fairly greasy. Nice. Boom, done, on. Nice when things fit on so easy. Yep, sometimes, right? Let's uh, screw it back in. It's just, it's just to keep the shock in the right spot. Yeah. So we don't get any ish. Up. Yeah. And so that goes. So that's going to go like, on and there. That's where the post fits up and through. Yeah. And the seat All right. So let's do a uh, ski swap. Okay. We're just easing into it. Yep. And the sled works a little different than our legit winch on the truck, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Come on, baby. Oh. Penetrating fluid, man. Wow. Let me grab the penetrating fluid. Wow. Go ahead. That's good. All right, penetrate, fluid, penetrate. Come on, come on. There it is. Come on, yes. Okay, there you go. Oh. It's almost a full turn. Yeah, we're moving. We're moving now. Like I said, you see these nylon bolts? So they get, in addition to getting seized, the nylon like just bonds with the metal over time. Squeak. Yeah. Oh, wow. Here, I can move. Hey, no, it's okay, it's okay. I'm gonna get one more turn with this guy, and then I should be able to take it out with the gun. Yeah, the gun, the gun should be able to do that. I like power tools. Power tools. Watch your ears. It's, it's the rubber inside again. So you can just back it out. I don't think it's going to work for you though, if it didn't already. Okay, well then. Huh. What did 
it feel like when you hit it there? Just nothing? It didn't even budge. Just flip it over and push it into the ground, right on the ground and hit it? You know what I mean? Maybe. Just give it no option? Yeah. Put it down where there's no, nowhere for it to bounce. Yeah, exactly. A little bit of a man on your hammer. All right, let's get this stupid bolt out of there. You want to put a foot up on it? Yeah, maybe. Watch, watch my swing here on your camera. Yeah, I'm moving up. Okay. Watch my toe. Come on. Wow. Not even a little. That's crazy. All right, well, I'm gonna go grab my Sawzall. We're gonna pry these out. Sawzall, Sawzall, post comes out. Cause I need this post. I can't, I can't sacrifice that. Yeah. But I might have to order rubber and bolt. Yeah, well, we'll do what we can do. But I need this post out, so. Yeah, well, and I'm gonna have to do it on the other ski if this one's this bad. So let me go grab my Sawzall. Actually, is it out here? So we did our best to hammer this thing out and that was not happening. So next up is cutting her. It's just hitting on the bottom now. Just a little yep. bit. Uh. Yeah, just try wiggling and jiggling and it's so close. There it is. So it's it wasn't, is there rubber in there? Yeah, a little bit around the edge. Man, well now we gotta get that bolt out of there because we can't reuse this arm unless she comes out. So let's just try hitting that with the hammer and see what happens. No. Because it's so in there. So I'm going to cut those off flush. Why? Drill it? Take them to work and drill them. Or maybe we'll put them on the drill press. And I'll just have to order new bolts and new bushings. Yeah, yeah, we don't have a choice. Yeah, and so the other side's probably gonna be just as bad. Hopefully not, but yeah, you're probably right. All right, well thankfully skis are pretty easy, so let's come on back inside here. We can leave this out here for a minute. I'm hoping you're gonna be able to do it. <laughs> What the hell, man? We got the worst tools. Apparently, we have the best. worst tools. We got to stop going to Harbor Freight. No Princess kidding. Auto. No kidding. <laughs> this one's uh. Oh man. Doesn't even say. They're so ashamed of their quality. They don't even put their name on the brand. I've never even seen the hammer break like that before. Yeah. And both of them. I broke one. Man. All right. Well, that's the third tool of the day. We Jeez. should call it quits soon, or else we're gonna break everything. Ah. Burp the trigger a bit. Haha! -ha. Beauty. If that thing pulls right out, I'm gonna love it. Oh no way! Come on! What are the odds? One is so tough and one's mint. Well, whatever. I'll take whatever, it. Whatever. I'll take it. Exactly. At least we can show you one ski install today, and then I order a bushings for the other. Side. Exactly. Perfect. All right. Well, that ski's trashy. Never say everything's easy. <laughs> it took a little bit of work, but uh, a little cut on that one, a big cut on that one. Well, through YouTube. See you later. Bye skis! So this is the post we pulled off the old ski. This new ski is not the exact same. You can it's see... It's a newer model. Yeah, there's a bit of a gap on either side. 
So we're just going to straight up shim it up, I think, with just some washers. Yep. And this is our one issue, though, is the holes don't exactly line up. So here. If I push down on the gasket. No, ah. no. It's too much. It's got no it's give to it. Yeah. It's a solid piece, right? No, I know. That's fine. We're just going to shave a couple mil off the bottom of those feet. We'll just take off, like, maybe two mil on each one, and then we'll try it again. Okay. Okay. Alrighty, well, hopefully that's enough. Alright, so here's the post. Show them the bottom. So the, these are the shaved bottoms to just give us a bit more space. They're rough, but... So if you put it in there and try to fit the bolts... It seems like I cut about maybe a mil or two off. I still need about half a bolt's width. So like another two mil. Yeah, this hole on the post just is a little too tall. So we'll do a little bit more shaving and then we should be in business here. So one fat washer on either side. And uh, then we should have a nice snug fit here. So yeah, you know, we're bodging it together, we're making it work, but that's what budget building's all about, right? Got a flathead screwdriver there somewhere. Uh, pull out my pull out my top drawer, top drawer of my toolbox. No, no, uh, sorry, second drawer, second drawer. Yeah, should be a flathead of some nature there somewhere. Yeah, right beauty. That the broken one. That's the broken one from earlier. <laughs> Why'd you put it back? I don't know. I just I was holding it and I dropped it. There you go. Thanks. <laughs> this is the floppy one. There it is. There yeah, it is. I felt it. I felt it go. Aha! Beauty. And yeah, that should be like totally. That's solid. Hundred percent. Oh yeah. There um, you go. For the do-it-yourselfer, for the do-it-yourselfer at home, we have upgraded an O2. Grand Touring uh, with Pro Pilot skis off of an 04 Rev. So it's doable. You need to do a little bit of a little bit of shim work in here, and you need to manipulate that rubber a little bit. You're going to need the rubbers off the Grand Touring, not off the Rev. However, it's doable. And this is a lighter ski. It's in better shape yeah. than my steels were. And uh, yeah, should be good. It's got sweet green tips on it. It's got sweet green tips on it. Woo! That don't color match at all. Alrighty. And the bushing didn't come out. No, it's it's on here. Okay, yeah, we're yeah, good. it's on there. We're good. We're good then, and the yeah. upper one's still in. Yep. Yeah, there is an upper bushing there, right? Yep. Awesome. Can you get the top piece on there? Yeah. Um, no. Okay. Yeah. Got that. No, I'm gonna have to do. We're gonna have to do a basic alignment when we're done here. Yeah. But that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. She's she's, all she's in. She's all the way around. Yeah. Hundred percent. Okay. So that's it. Fancy new green tip ski. Do it. All right. Final piece in the ski installation is this little cap. We'll give her a little persuasion. And boom, fresh ski. Beauty. On to the next. On to the other side. When I took these off. And I don't know if you can show the shot back to back, but I took a picture directly down and you could see the bend in these. Actually here, you can see the two bent sides. We're like that. Yeah, so well, pretty straight now. In the other video that you can see, it's got like a 30 degree bend in them from yeah. where they were hit. Yeah. So this is the best I did and I painted them just so that uh, it wouldn't rot too too quickly. Yeah, no, it's okay. We're gonna have one side of the suspension is gonna be new hotness and this side's still gonna look old and busted. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but that's okay. That's okay. As long as they both work. Yes, indeed. <laughs> so, if I remember correctly, I left this bolt inside the frame because it was a tight spot. So. Oh, I see it right there. I think this is it on just this one. You tight? Oh yeah. Yeah? She's, she's nice and tight. Okay, I'm letting go. There, I'm about in place already. Okay. That's pretty 
snug, and then we'll just finish it up with a wrench. And we're home. It looks like we're home. <laughs> so, hold on, let me get this side in. Yeah, that's all I needed, just a tap on the in, I think. Maybe one more in. Got it. You think so? Okay, we're laughing. So we've got all of our new components now in for this uh, right front corner of our suspension. Uh, as I showed you when I was disassembling it, if you look up inside the tunnel here, you can see the rods are straight again. I now have clearance between my spring and my radius arms where before the radius arms were touching the spring. So we didn't replace them. Okay, whatever. We bent them, they clear. It's cheaper good. this way. It's cheaper this way, and it's gonna work. Yeah. It's not gonna touch anything, it's gonna absorb bumps, everybody's gonna have fun. Oh, they look pretty good. Now, the one thing we were not able to do today was finish installing the ski because of that guy. That yeah. seized bolt inside that bush. Yeah, it will not come out of there. That's the foot for the ski, and we could not, for the life of us, get it out. So, I'm gonna take that to the shop, I'm gonna cut it and drill it out, we're gonna replace this bushing, install the ski on here, yeah. and then put it together, then we're done. Yeah, the other so, thing too is the shock. This is the bolt that we broke while it's coming off. Yeah. So right now you can see we just got the screwdriver holding her in. So we need to, this is we'll order uh, a new bushing for sure, and maybe just use a bolt we can find yeah, ourselves. Yeah, I'm but sure I can find a bolt. We definitely need to order a bushing for that. So that's one thing. Those are the two things kind of holding us back from completing this today. So I will get all the parts necessary and we'll shoot a follow up. Once everything is done, I'll show you what I ended up doing all together, and obviously you'll see the final product when we're out riding this winter. Um, all right, so now we're gonna finish this baby up for the day. We are gonna do the hood over here. We're gonna get the windshield put on, and then just a couple things on the engine. We're gonna put the fan shroud back on. We'll throw a belt over there on the CVT. We got a brand new belt to go in. So. And we'll get this uh, track turning today because we haven't actually turned the track yet either. We've only run it without the belt, so we'll see what's up. So we have a windshield for the sled, but the issue is it needs this plastic shroud. You can see it's got this big gap here behind the light. So this is what you would take off to replace these lights. We don't want to do that though. Ours so, was missing when I picked it up. Yeah. Um, I found the windshield when I bought it, but without this plastic bezel piece, it wasn't quite fitting with yeah. the windshield. And there was frankly, a gap. you wouldn't even need the windshield. Just this thing kind of makes it look complete because before without the windshield or without this piece, I should say, it did not look complete. So. It just fits in like that from the bottom. It's not going to fall off if we open it. I'm going to keep, keep a, a hand, hand on, on it. it. Yeah. Okay. And then on the inside, you can see these little tabs that come through. And so originally they had... I can, I can had, show you by moving it. Yeah, so that's, originally they had these rubber bands on them, right? Yeah. Skidoo Special Factory Rubber Bands. OEM rubber bands. I priced out a pack of them and they were 14 bucks for eight. And I said to myself, well, I have a hundred piece zip tie pack in the garage <laughs> that I spent three dollars on. Budget bill. Princess Auto. Now, I mean, the only thing I can see happening here is, is maybe they're, no, it's all plastic. I was gonna say maybe they'd melt from the heat, but it's all plastic, so that doesn't make any mm -hmm. sense. So no, this should be, a, this is a good budget fix, I'd say. All right, now let's see how the windshield fits. I'm curious. I still think it might be an Articat windshield. Yeah, but we're not sure it's even the right windshield. Again, the sled was in a field. The windshield was sitting next to the sled. We'd rather bring home some windshield than nothing, so he grabbed it. Hmm. What do you see in there? Mm. Oh, I see the slot over here. Yeah, it doesn't seem to want to line up, and there's still a gap. So it is definitely the wrong windshield. Because then, is there anything here? Unless, unless the windshield's supposed to go on first. But there's no black, there's no holes for these. There's no holes here. For clips. And either. there's definitely no tabs up here. So yes, this definitely does seem to be the wrong windshield. Okay. Which, you know, the question is, how can we bodge it? The, the weird part, or the part if that we you won't be able to fix is these. Well, I could drill holes into this bezel yeah. and get push clips from work. So what if we took the zip ties off the upper two, leave these two in, right? And then forced it down beside the windshield so that the two tabs were side by side in that gap. Yeah. Zip tied them together in the gap. So then they're held. And then whatever's up here, we'll just deal with. If I have to, I'll get a piece of like nice thick weather stripping and I'll put it in under there. Yeah. To stop the airflow. And then what I'll do is before we zip tie it, we'll measure it. I'll mark here. We'll take this out. We'll just drill 
a couple small holes, and I've got these push clips. Push clips would work perfect. And then that would seal them up. It would tighten it up here, tighten it up here, and hold at the front the corners, because it didn't seem to restrict the headlight at all. And I don't care if I got an RV windshield on this. No, thing. I mean, it doesn't do bother I. me. It right? looks fine. If anything, it makes it more desirable because it's extra custom. Perfect. Yeah, the two clips are going to go in there, hold the front corner snug, and then I'm thinking a big piece of foam and two pieces of black tape. Okay. So we went and found three nice little bolts because we were struggling with this thing. But the key is to open up this secondary. When it's wide open, it should make the belt way easier, right? Yeah, it should fit on there nice. And if you do own one of these, you do have a tool in your toolkit, but we don't have the toolkit. Toolkit got stolen. <laughs> so we just, uh, we may do. You put three in, huh? I put three. It only said to do one, but in my head, three was more balanced, less stress on one part. It's all cast aluminum. I'd be worried about something breaking. All right, well, we've been struggling with it now, so hopefully that's the easy answer. Let's yeah, see. Hopefully. All right, you're close now. Yeah, once we get that in there, you should have enough slack. And for the record, you probably don't have to take yeah, this that. whole secondary off here to do this, but oh, we were yeah. kind of doing it the hard way first. We're not exactly experienced when it comes to changing belts. <laughs> so we learned something today. Oh uh, no, we've changed some belts, but normally we just struggle with it. But look at that, you just opened up that secondary and she goes on like uh, like butter. Yeah, so throw this bolt in. Keep that in mind if you're ever changing a belt, open the secondary. I accidentally installed it in the right direction. It works out nicely. <laughs> That's good. Oh, so this one doesn't even need one. Done. In. Okay, so now the big question, what did we spend on this machine? So as you know, 400 bucks cash bought at an auction just to get the sled. Um, and then we bought the skis. They were purchased off the internet for 50 bucks, which is a pretty dang good deal for skis. If you look at new ones, they're way more than that. Uh, the plastic bezel up there around the light, that cost us 20 bucks cash. We got that from a, basically an old Skidoo junk dealer. Uh, we got the new belt off of Amazon, actually a little bit less than $40, $36.64 to be specific. Uh, and then honestly, the most expensive parts we bought, which are brand new, are the suspension parts. So the trailing arm up there and then those new bushings, the radius rods we managed to save and just bend them back. Um, and then we've kind of figured probably about 30, maybe 40 bucks in fuel. Um, cleaning supplies we bought a little bit of new generic fuel line so all of that stuff in about 40 bucks so that brings the brand to the grand total for all the stuff we put on the sled to three hundred and nine dollars and sixty one cents Canadian so basically this is now a seven hundred dollar build and the sled is missing nothing it doesn't have the perfect windshield but that's not that big a deal it's totally ready to run and the, the beauty of it is, and you know, Matt's right here, you can tell me if I'm crazy here, we bought it for 400, put three into it, you'd probably get 1500 bucks for this sled on the open market, I'd say. Yeah, it's, easy. It's in good shape and she runs. Um, so yeah, and as you've seen, we're doing things budget here. You know, it wasn't a joke when we said budget build. We're making things work. We're, you know, shaving down rubber where we need to or clipping things on where we need to. Um, so y you know what, it always, at the end of the day, it's always time, versus money. If you're willing to put the time in and bodge things together, you can save cash or you can just throw money at it and get the proper parts. That's up to you. Okay, just to finish up this video, we're gonna throw the fan shroud back on the engine. You saw we just got that belt on there and we're gonna run it and just watch the track spin because that's also something we, uh, we haven't actually done yet. So let's do it. All right, All right here, I'll take the, take light. the light from me. Good. Good. Well, I am, been it. 
I don't know, man. A little more, a little more. We'll go, we'll go a couple more. Another, another time or two with the ether. What the hell? Good. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's gonna need some. It must have just got gummed up. It's the only thing I can think of. Yeah. All right. Well, that's okay. We have seen it run. I still have faith that it runs. It'll be okay. We don't know exactly what the issue is. Things have come back together. Everything looks all right. Yeah. The belt on there wouldn't make a difference. No. The exhaust is back on. Yeah. There was definitely spark, but yeah, it seems like it's not pulling fuel right away. So I think the next thing I'll do is I'll pull the carb back off and see if there's fuel in the bowl. Yeah, make sure it's getting gas. Make sure it's getting gas. There's a problem then, before. And then we'll go back to the pump and we'll just trace the whole system backwards. Well, that's it for this uh, sad episode of Ski Do Redo. This Ski Do Redo, I should say. This is the the saddest ending we've had yet. But uh, Matt's really determined to get this thing running. I'm not sure it's gonna happen, but I'm not worried, I'm not worried. Next time, come back, and the next time you see this machine, it's gonna be out in the snow. We got all that suspension work done, we'll get the other side done, we'll show you that. And if we do have to do more work to it, we'll show you that too, but I'm hopeful it's no issue. So come back next time to find out what our problem is, if we solve the problem. And as always, hit subscribe guys to TFL Off-Road and stay tuned for the latest news views and real world reviews. See ya. Say bye, man. See you later.